Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23, I want to share with you just some thoughts, just some observations tonight uh, from God's Word from this passage of Scripture. I, I uh, came across this passage as I was preparing for last Sunday's Building with the Bible Hour class, and uh, uh, I was looking at verse 23 and uh, the fact that Jesus, um, he confirmed that giving a tithe was an appropriate thing to do. Uh, our lesson, our building with the Bible, I was about giving uh, this past Sunday. And so I came across that. In verse 23, uh, Jesus was condemning the Pharisees and the scribes for some of their attitudes and, and some of their uh, the way that they were thinking, but he, he didn't tell them that giving a tithe was wrong. He said they should give a tithe, but what they were doing in their giving was inappropriate, uh, their attitude, that, and they were adding to God's commands, but then they were forgetting about other commands that God had given, and that, that verse says such as mercy and faith and, and uh, uh, some weightier matters, Jesus calls them. But nevertheless, he said to give the tithe is a good thing. And just in reading that verse, that, that verse, and of course I read the whole chapter and that passage of scripture as I was preparing, and uh, I always want to know the context of a verse, and, and as uh, you're using it, I, can't, I, I went to that verse because I just saw it in some of my material, and uh, I, was, I wanted to remember what it was all about. And so as I was preparing today, uh, I just found out that I was going to come over here last week as well uh, as Pastor and Angie realized they were going to be gone. And so I was in this passage, and so uh, I just decided or asked the Lord, to, uh, as I was asking the Lord to help me uh, find a place to go, this is where I just stayed and landed. And, and uh, I'll be honest, this passage of Scripture is about hypocrisy. <laughs> And so it's not a really uplifting kind of uh, a passage of scripture. It's not like Psalm 100 and, and uh, Psalm 23 and, and uh, uh, Philippians 4.13. Some of these verses we like to go to for inspiration and uh, uh, give us a boost and all those kind of things. But yet, it's really packed with some, some truths that I think will be helpful to us. And if we can get past the, uh, the dreary, the drudgery of what the topic is, uh, we can find that uh, there's something helpful for us uh, in this passage. And uh, really, uh, what the Lord Jesus was teaching about in Matthew 23 was the danger of religion. Because if you'll remember, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the, uh, the Essenes, these religious leaders in Judaism, they were all about their religion, and they had completely lost sight of God. And they gave no attention to Jesus Christ. They said he was, he was nobody. And so, although they were very, very religious, they had no spirituality to them. And although they were looked at in society as very pious, uh, they did not know God. And so, Jesus wanted, was teaching in this passage, and he's been teaching, he's been answering questions from the Pharisees in, in the Gospel of Matthew, and he's been teaching a lot of different topics, and, but then when he gets to chapter 23, he's directing his teaching to the Pharisees and, and their condition and how they're living life, and, and it's not good, right? And we know that about the Pharisees. If you've been around church very long at all, you know that when you hear about the Pharisees, there's never really anything good to say about them uh, in general. Uh, but, and, and so Jesus is trying to instruct and help them with some things. So I want to think about that a little bit. In Matthew chapter 23, I want to read beginning in verse number 23. And, uh, but we'll make comments about the whole chapter, but we don't have a lot of time. So we'll just read beginning in verse 23. The Bible says here, and remember this is Jesus speaking. He says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Now if you're in the audience and Jesus is speaking, and he goes, he says, woe unto you. You're going to perk your ears up, right? Because that's a huge statement. We don't speak like that in our vernacular normally today. But that was, those were big words for the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. He names them. They don't have to wonder who he's talking about. It's, it's us. And he says, ye hypocrites. That's big time, right? And uh, he's, he's not, he does not have kind word for them here. For you pay tithe of mint and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye have to done and not to leave the other undone. And he said, you, you, you are hypocrites because you tithe and you tithe over every little thing and you 
really added to the law that God had given in the Old Testament, the, uh, the, the law of God for the Jewish people. You've taken that law, and, and he said there, you ought to have done these things, but you shouldn't have left out the other things. And they were picking and choosing what they wanted to do. Of course, the preacher is going to talk about tithing, right, because that pays his paycheck, right? That's what people accuse preachers today of all the time. Unfortunately, there are men like that that, are, that, that really practice that. They want to grow the church because it will grow their, their pockets, right? Now, that's not a biblical pastor, preacher, yet that was, that, that, that people do that today. And, but these Pharisees and scribes, of course, they want you to tithe because that's going to help them out. And they lived well, <laughs> these, these, these religious leaders. But he says, you've omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. Jesus said, there are things that are more important than you trying to, trying to nitpick over whether people are, are tithing correctly. He said, you ought, he said, these ought you have to, do, you, to do. In other words, you're supposed to tithe. You need to tithe. That's important. But if you do that and leave out these other things, you're wasting your time. You're missing the point. I don't need your money. I need your heart. And, he's, and, and so he said, you need a tithe, yes, but you, you're missing the most important things. And he calls them a hypocrite. Verse 24, he said, ye blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. You get the picture? He says, uh, if you're thinking about a strainer, he says, you maybe got some liquid and you're pouring it in and you use a, a strainer and, and you make sure you got the gnat out. You ever have, you know, you get a little bug on your drink or something and of course that would have been more common in their day and, have a bug or something like that flying around. They had ways to strain uh, their drinks and uh, the different kind of things and liquids, and, and they would work hard and get all the impurities out because you can strain at a gnat. You got that little tiny bug out of your liquid, and yet you let the camel in. Obviously, the camel's huge. Obviously, a camel, you're not, you might miss a gnat if you're not careful. It might get in your drink. You ever taken a drink or something that had a little bug in it? I mean, sitting outside, that's no fun, right? You miss it out. If there was, you know, uh, a cockroach in it, you're going to see it. You're going, you're going to immediately mess it up. If there, he said, there's a camel. He said, you, you, you made sure you saw the gnat and you missed the camel. He said, you're, 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 you're looking to uh, complicate this thing. And it's not so complicated. In verse uh, 20, he said, you're blind. He said, you're, trying, you're just seeing what you want to see and you're missing what's so obvious. In verse 25, he says again, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, ye hypocrites, for you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, and that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto a whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanliness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And we'll stop reading right there. I hope you'll take time later maybe to read the whole chapter. But we see that word just in the passage, that the few verses we read, we see the word hypocrisy or hypocrite over and over. In the New Testament, that word is used about 20 times. Every time Jesus spoke the word, we see that word seven times in this chapter of God's word. Again, Jesus speaking it. The word hypocrite, if you look up the definition, it means an actor uh, or uh, uh, assumed a character, kind of like a stage player. They would put on a mask and they would act like somebody else, right? And that was the word hypocrite. Uh, it was a pretender. And uh, that's what a hypocrite was. In, if you look at Mark chapter number 7 and verse number 6, you'll find a good definition. Uh, Jesus answered and said unto them in, in Mark 7, 6, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but with their heart, but their heart is far from me. And a, a hypocrite, as we think about spiritual things, was somebody who, who says all the right things, but they do not live it out. They know the right things to say. They know uh, how to look. They know how to appear godly, but their heart is corrupt. And he was describing the Pharisees. And now in Matthew 23, he's calling out these Pharisees 
and he wants people to know the danger of religion apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't want to be religious people today. We want to be people who will have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. People who have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ will do things that function as a religion. So in other words, we, had, we gather on a weekly basis here at our church. We do some things that are ritualistic. We sing a song. We say a prayer. We, we read the Bible. Those are, are ritualistic things, but they can't become just rituals. They can't become uh, religion for us apart from Jesus Christ because we'll miss the mark. We'll become a hypocrite. We have uh, the Lord's table where we, where we take the cup and the bread, and, and that's very ritualistic. You know, every church maybe has a different little subtle ways that they do it, but m most every church does that ordinance or practices that ordinance the same way every time. We have our table up here. We cover it up. Somebody uh, will come over and lift up off the, the, the uh, cloth and uncover it. Pastor will uh, set it up. He'll read some scripture. He'll speak differently each time, but he's going over the same things and teaching us different aspects, and, but he's going over the same things. If you'll notice him, we're all creatures of habit. He'll even be messing with the things the same way every time. He'll have his hands on, uh, on the platter with the, with the bread and then with the cup, and it looks very ritualistic, and it is, but all it is is dead religion if we don't have Jesus Christ. And so hypocrisy is a scary, dangerous thing for the life of a believer. And it's very scary for, for people to become involved in religion and miss Jesus Christ because all there will be are religious people who are going to wake up one day in hell. And that's a scary thing. That's scary. And so for us, and, and if you're a Christian today, if you're a born-again believer today, you have no fear of hell. But what I hope you'll see is that the danger of becoming a hypocrite be makes us unusable in the sight of God, in the work of God, and it will create in us a hindrance for other people to know Christ. Rather, we'll be a deterrent. We'll push people away by our religion when we leave out the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he, he speaks of the hypocrite in these verses. Now, I want you to see a couple things very quickly. I, uh, uh, I, this outline that I have uh, is from the first year that I was preaching, and I know that I found these four points uh, from somebody else, and I didn't write it down who it was. And so I don't want to take credit for these points because they're not original to me, but they were just good at, at helping with this uh, passage. I'm sorry, I don't know. I can't remember the man that gave them. But the first point was the outward appearance. But we see that clearly in the text, the outward appearance. Because Jesus said to these men, you look good on the outside. In verse 25, he says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you may clean the outside of the cup. The outside was clean. If you'll go back and read through the chapter, you'll find early on in the chapter that the Bible talks about how uh, these men, uh, they, they liked to be, call, to be called rabbi. They liked the title that they had. Uh, you'll find that they, uh, they were men who uh, they, they, they prayed in public, and, and you'll find that they, they liked to look the part they, they, because it, it brought them a lot of respect in the community. Even outside of the, of the religious community, it brought them respect among secular people as well, that they were the, they were the top of the, the hierarchy amongst the Jewish faith. And so they liked to look good on the outside. They were clean on the outside. The Bible says in verse 27, For you are like, an, uh, you are like unto whited sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward. And so on the outside they appear beautiful a white sepulcher. You know what a sepulcher is? It's a, it's a, it's a tomb. It was a place where they put uh, the coffins. It was a place uh, like a mausoleum, you know, that maybe is back here or, or one of those kind of things. That, and they would paint those things white on the outside. And uh, they would do it to make them visible. And they would do it to help it not look so dreary. And so these buildings would become very attractive. And you would look at the building and you could admire the, the uh, architecture. You can admire the collar, and, and we do that today with, uh, with a cemetery or with a place, a, a, a mausoleum, those kind of things. We want to make it look as nice as we can to honor the people and to help uh, uh, make 
even though it's a it's a maybe a, a sad thing to go be a part of or to go see or to be around, it would just be a, something little to help a little bit with the with the, the the atmosphere and those kind of things. And so the buildings looked beautiful. So on the outside, these men they looked good, they looked right. In verse twenty eight, it says even. All, Jesus said, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous. And so he said on the outside, you appear righteous. You look like you're doing well. You look like you're doing the right things. Uh, uh, in verse 14 of this chapter, it talks about how they were, they were making long prayers. And they, they thought they were very righteous in their, in their praying, in their ability to pray, and their ability to open up uh, the Old Testament scripture and, and talk about something that was there. And, and they, they felt very righteous because they, were, they knew the right things to do. So on the outside, they appeared right. The outward appearance looked good. And, and the outward appearance is important for the Christian. I, I want you to see that. It's it, what the outside is, is important. God does care about the outside, but only when the inside is right. You see, if we just clean up the outside, when we've done no good. We, we're, not, we're not advancing in our, in our Christian life. We're not growing in our faith. God cares about standards. All, throughout the New Testament, God gives instruction about having standards. There is a definite right and wrong in this world. It, it applies to things like what we look like, where we go, how we interact with people. There is definite sin and definite right. Uh, there is, it's not objective. It, uh, it's not, uh, it's not uh, subjective. It's not something we can just figure out on our own. right? There is right and wrong in this world. But if what we try to do is just clean up the outside, if we just try to go find somebody off the street and we put them in nice clothes and we give them a haircut and we tell them when to stand up and sing songs and, and we instruct them to put some money in the plate when it passes by them, if we give them all that and make them look like they fit into our church but they don't know Jesus Christ, it's a bit off or not. Because the Bible says these men looked good on the outside, but their inward appearance was terrible. Because the Bible, the Bible said there in verse uh, 25 again, he said, you cleaned up the cup on the outside, but the inside was still dirty. Have you ever pulled out a dish from the sink that maybe you washed and, and you went to uh, pour some liquid in it, pour some water in it, pour your favorite uh, you know, soda in it or whatever, and you started pouring it, oh no, it's still dirty in there, you missed it. You don't want to drink out of it anymore. And so you either just throw it back in the dirty sink or you go and wash it before you use it. You don't want to use it when it's dirty. Even though it looks great on the outside, you don't want that dirt on the inside because you know the dirt on the inside is going to get inside of you, right? And Jesus said, you, you, you took so much care to take care of the outside, but you neglected the inside, and that's a real problem. You've become a hypocrite. He said in verse 25, on the inside, it, you're full of extortion and excess. They were greedy, greedy people. They would rob. They would, they would do all that they could to take care of themselves, these religious leaders. Do all they could to take care of themselves. They didn't worry about the people at all. They didn't care about the common people. They didn't care about the people they were supposed to be serving or helping. They were greedy. They were full of extortion. They were full of excess. They wanted stuff. They wanted lots of it in their life. They had more than they needed, and the things that they were doing were just wicked things. They were just trying to have more and do more in this world, and they had no view of eternity. They had no view of God, certainly not of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, but even in their own faith, they lost sight of Almighty God and what he wanted, uh, and of eternity. They just cared about self, and that, that describes Christians a lot, doesn't it? Does that describe us a lot? I need more of this, I need more of that, I want to do this. It's not fair, my family can't do that. I, I, I want more in my life, or, or we become greedy, and, and we become self-centered, and that's what, was these, that's what uh, characterized these people on the inside. That's what they were really made up of. In verse 28, uh, or... Uh, verse 27, we talked about those sepulchers. They look great on the outside, but then the Bible says, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness. It didn't matter how great they made the outside look, the inside was still full of death and destruction. It was awful. It was, it was, it was gross, these Pharisees and scribes. Their lives were awful. They were hypocrites. They, they could do no good. Verse 28, it says, Even so outwardly you appeared righteous unto men, but with 
end ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And although they had fooled some, and they dressed the part and acted the part and looked like they were righteous, pious men, the Bible says they were full of hypocrisy. That Mark 7, 6 verse said they knew what to say, but they didn't give God their heart. How many of us today have had moments in life, and maybe it's right now, where you know all the right things to say. You know I need to go to church. I don't know how many people tell me this. I know I need to go to church. I, and I love God, and, and I, I want to I give him my life, but, you know, I got this going on. I got that going on. Or how many of us, we, we show up, and we sit in our seat, and we do it because we know it's the right thing to do, but we're watching our clock. We're waiting to go. You know, is this going to be over? Preacher says we're going to have a special meeting. We're like, oh, man, I just wanted to go home. I wanted to rest, and, and uh, he, wants, he wants us to do more stuff, and he wants us to give more money, and, and we lose sight of reality of what God has for us. And these men, they, knew, they looked good on the outside, but they were full of hypocrisy. They, they, they talked a good talk, but they couldn't follow it up with their life. And then the Bible says they were just full of iniquity. They were full of sin. They were full of sin. This is what a real hypocrite is. And, and us who are Christians today, when we allow sin to creep into our lives, as good as we think we've got, we're doing, as we look around and think, well, I'm doing better than the guy over there, when we let sin in our lives, the Bible says we are a hypocrite and we're filthy and we're of no, no use in the work of God. The problem for these people, for these Pharisees and religious leaders, is that they were blind. Verse 26 says, Thou blind Pharisees. Thou blind Pharisees. They were blind. Their focus was that they wanted men to see them. They were blind to what God wanted, and they, their eyes were not focused on him. Their eyes were focused on self. They just wanted God. Uh, they just wanted men to see them. You'll see that in uh, those verses early on in this chapter. In verse 14 it says, For you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore shall you receive the greater damnation. For a pretense you make prayer. They wanted people to see them. So they were, they're focused on self. They were blind to spiritual values. You'll look at verses 16 through 22, and you'll find that uh, they, they had their, their values in the wrong place. They were, again, thinking about self. They were, they were not thinking about what God had. In verses 23 and 24, you'll find that they were blind to godly things. Uh, they were focused on the tithe and leaving out mercy. They were focused on this part of the law and trying to make it more tough and make it harder for people instead of simplifying the word of God and saying, here's what God says, let's do it together, let's follow him. And they, they were blind to godly things. They were even blind to their own hypocrisy. In the verses 29 through 35, they didn't even realize they were hypocrites. They didn't even see the problem in their lives as people were 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 struggling and hurting all around them, and they were getting more and getting gain and, and, uh, and gaining power in society. They didn't even realize the hypocrisy. We love God, and they were great at praying. Then they would say amen and say, why didn't that guy put his tithe in? Oh, he's, he's terrible, you know. Or he, they would say amen, thank God for the great offering. Now I'm going to go to Outback. Probably not out back. Go uh, do whatever with this money, right? They, they were hypocrites. They were blind even to their own hypocrisy. What's the solution? If that's the problem, if that's obviously not good, if, we, if that's a danger, then what do we got to do? Well, we've got we've to cleanse ourselves. Verse 26 says, Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup, and then that the outside of them may be clean also. If we, listen, what happens is when we as Christians try to make the outside look the part, we eventually burn out, we, we fail out, we eventually miss the point, we get so frustrated we just decide it's not worth it, and we go on, we do something else. We eventually fall into sin and say, well, I had a good run, I'm going to go live my life now. We see it all the time, day after day. Jesus said, listen, it's not about taking care of the outside, it's about taking care of the inside. When we will get our heart right, when we get our relationship with God right, we will care about what He wants and just love Him and follow Him. The outside then takes care of itself. If I'm worried about looking like a Christian, all I've got to do is fall in love with Jesus, follow after Him. Because when I follow Him, I'll naturally be like Him. You know this with your kids. When you see your kids start hanging out with crowds you don't like, a bad influence, you begin to see it in your kids, right? 
And you know, uh-oh, I've got to move them away from them. I've got to, I've got to help them see this. Right? You know that when you get around people that are negative, that it, it tends to make you have a negative or a sour uh, attitude. When you get around the people that are happy and joyful, it tends to help you out, right? We emulate who we're around. And so when we, in, when we get around Jesus Christ, when we spend time with him in his word, in faithful to his house, serving him, doing good, then we'll become like him. The outside will take care of itself. We'll become like him, and it won't be a, hip, a hypocrite. We'll be a real thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. If we'll fear God, have an awe of God, we'll find that we can mature in our faith and, and see these ugly things be removed from our lives. The Bible says in James 4, 8, Draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Listen, if you want to figure out how to how to live the Christian life. If you want to get the outside stuff right, you got to get the inside uh, stuff right first. If you want to get the inside stuff right, you just got to draw near to God. And he says, if you'll just seek after me, I'll be there and I'll come to you. Draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. It's a promise. If I search for him, I will find him in my life. And then he says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Draw an eye to God, and you'll find cleansing in your life. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. We don't like to do that. We like to examine our neighbor. <laughs> we like to examine the guy sitting in the back behind us or the lady sitting in the front in front of us. We like to examine uh, their kids. <laughs> we like to examine the, the person who says they're a part of Tri-State Baptist Temple but never shows up. But we struggle to examine ourselves, but... He doesn't, the Bible doesn't say examine them. It says examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobate. We've got to just take inventory of our life. Where are we? we can, I mean, if we're just honest with ourselves, we can tell whether we're living a hypocritical life or whether it's real. Right? We can know. I mean, you can fool yourself for a while, but if you'll be honest, you'll take stock of your own life. Do I come because I love the Lord or because I just know I'm supposed to? Do I give because I want to be a cheerful giver to the things of God or do I give because well, the preacher's just not going to stop talking about it so I do it. Do we serve because we want to see other people know what we have or do we just do it because well, nobody else is going to do it so I guess I'll do it. Take inventory of yourself. Examine yourself so that we're not living hypocritical life. Let me close with this. Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24. You know the verses. I would guess everybody in here knows these verses, but they need to be our actual prayer. They need to be real, sincere in our lives. I hope you'll read these verses. I hope you'll memorize these verses, but let them be a real prayer. Psalm 139, 23 and 24. You know it. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Listen, I, I believe that the people that come to this church on Wednesday night desire to live a life of obedience to God. You don't do it because you want the blessing. You don't do it because you want stuff. You do it because you love. I, I believe that. But the, the most Sincere Christians can be distracted in this life. And so we need this prayer. This is a hard prayer. God, search me. I'm, I'm good about looking at somebody and saying, God, please help them to see their need. <laughs> please help them to see that's not right. Help them, Lord. And I, I'll pray that sincerely. But if I'm going to be any help to anybody else, I've got to start with me. Say, search me, oh God. Know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. We often stop there. God, do I have any problems? Do I have sin in my life? And you know the answer is yes. And then you go on. What that verse doesn't end. See if there be any wicked way in me. And if you mark in your Bible, I'd circle that word and. And I'd underline the last phrase. Lead me in the way everlasting. Listen, I want you to know something that's very important about somebody who leads you. 
You cannot be led if you do not follow. If the leader takes off and you just stand still, you can't be led, right? And the leader can be a great motivator, full of inspiration. He can be the son of God trying to lead. And if you don't take the step to follow, you can't be led. And when you ask God to examine your heart and show you if there's any wicked way, then you must say, lead me, lead me. But if you're going to, when he shows you the path, he doesn't force us to go. He says, come on. And he gives us the privilege to say yes. He gives us the opportunity to obey. And when we obey in following, then we can be led by the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we can have our heart right. Then the outside will take care of itself. Then we can be sure that we're not a hypocrite, and we can be used in the mighty work of God. Well, we'll, we'll stop. I went over. I always do. I always go over. But uh, my bus had broke down, so I don't have to go get on it, so I didn't get too excited. But uh, I'm, I'm glad you came today. This often is, is um, said to be the most encouraging uh, service of the week and I should have let you give testimonies but I forgot because I'm not in here and uh, but this is the group of people who want it the most right and there are others on our property that are like that you come this is the service where if you skip you know people are okay with it right got other things to do school's coming you know all the, tomorrow all the, but I'm thankful that you come and I hope you'll be encouraged don't be a hypocrite but be a be a follower of Christ be a true disciple and let God lead you and as he leads you, then you can help grab a hold of some others to come along with you. Peter came because his brother said, we found the Messiah, let's go. And you know the Messiah, so grab a hold of somebody else and say, come on, we found him, let's go. Let's serve him. Let's not be hypocrites. Let's be true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the day. We're thankful for the privilege to spend time in church tonight with this group of people, Lord. We pray you bless our time together, Lord. Use what we've heard to help us to grow. Thank you, Lord, for just the, the word of God and what it means to us, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for the privilege to share it. Lord, help us not to be hypocrites. Lord, help us to learn that you said clean the inside. Help us, Lord, to be right in our hearts. We want to serve you. We want to glorify you. We want to see you do a mighty work in our lives individually and in our church as a whole. We love you tonight. We thank you. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everybody. Sorry I went over. <laughs> Somebody play the piano.